we know how everything works. So, uh, first of all, anybody uh, uh, over here needs help completing workshop zero. I just want to see how many people have, um, I have to deal with. That's fine. Two, three, four, five, six. Good, beautiful, good. So we have few people. Uh, uh, how many people did both uh, setting up their PC with Git and setting up their matrix with Git, both of them? Be responsive, people. So the rest of you need help. <laughs> if you haven't done your matrix, you should do it, okay? We'll do it together, okay? So what I want you to do to, these are the things that we need to understand about Git when we are actually working throughout semester. At any moment of time, these are the steps you are going to take when you want to start working with your uh, project. So the very first thing that you do when you want to study, so you say, let me do this in OP244. Number one is, let me actually do it like this, that's better. Number one, everything must be in the repo, okay? When I say repo, you, the repo, it means the repo you created on GitHub for your OP244. You shouldn't do your work outside of the repository and then when you need help, say, tell me, wait a minute, let me copy it into it and push it. You don't do that. Every, you should live and breathe OOP244 in the repository. That's your home directory for your work for OOP244. That's number one. Okay? So everything must be done in the repo. Number two, be organized, please. Create directory for workshop inside the thing. So what I would do, let me just create a, a works thingy myself. Let me see if I can actually log in. Uh, I need something, maybe Mozilla. Well, wait a second, fire. Okay. Um, uh, my the Seneca College. Is that uh, my Seneca? That's here. Yeah. So student, I'm gonna um, GitHub. Okay. So I'm logging into GitHub. I'm hoping that I ha I still have my uh, thing over there. So GitHub, let me sign in. Okay. Okay, refresh Firefox, give me a second. So I haven't used Firefox for ages, so now it's telling me to refresh it. Okay, it didn't work. Okay, it's installing something. But, but what we do is this. So um, there is one thing I need to explain and um, for the number of uh, missions that I received or uh, collaboration requests that I have received and I opened your repository and I looked at it, these are the things. Uh, for example, I asked to call the directory OP244-works, something like that, right? Okay. Many people named it different things, OP244, my home directory, things like that. I ask you to have your student information, and I mentioned what I need. I need your section, I need your name, I need your student number, I need your email. These are the things that are supposed to be in your README file. And I ask you to update your git.gitignore with the gitignore that I mentioned what it is, so you, you've seen it in the video. But when I opened it up, many of you did not follow those things. So some people said, welcome to my repository in the readme file. Uh, other people had the git ignore not updated. One thing I want to mention, and I don't know if you have followed this thing, IPC144, but this is something extremely important. I want you to listen to this and remember this till the moment you are working in the computer industry. Okay? If you want to go do something else, forget this. 
computer programming is an exact science. What does it mean? If I told you to scratch your head, you should scratch your head. If I told you to pull both ears, you should do that. If I told you dot and a semicolon, it's a dot and a semicolon. Not space dot space semicolon. Not two dots and a semicolon. Not one dot and two semicolons. Not a dot and a semicolon and a new line. It is a dot and a semicolon. It's an exact science. You miss one dot, the airplane is going to crash with 300 people in it. It is not a joke. Computer programming is an exact science. When I ask you to have something in your README file, you put that in that README file. And you're going to get this attitude with respect to computer programming in any environment you work at. I'll give you an example. At the beginning of my programming life, okay, I was uh, asked to write a program to create, to uh, issue uh, train tickets like airplane tickets. They wanted to have the same fashion and style. It wasn't like that. It was a tour company. So I did that. So I created something that would give reference number, get all the good stuff. So it was a beautiful thing. And as soon as the ticket got issued, I said, OK, because the ticket is issued, it's a good thing. And they didn't ask me to do that. I did a cute thing. I did a beep at the end. So when the ticket was issued, it would do beep or beep beep at the end. Very nice thing, right? Good touch. It's a confirmation that ticket was issued. Then a room like this with operators were sitting over there issuing tickets. You open the lab. I would all would you hear was beep 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 beep. People went nuts the first day, and we had to shut down the program, I go recompile the code, and it wasn't like now to do internet thingy. I had to go home, open my computer, it takes five hours to boot, do the thing, recompile the damn thing, bring the code back. So the company had to start two days late because of, because of a goddamn beep. Okay? So I'm telling you, it's an exact science. So when you see the submitter tells you you have two spaces rather than one, don't get pissed. That's what you need to do. It has to be exact. That's what it's for. So, please, back to good attitude, please, please, please follow the instru instructions as is there. Do not do anything extra. Do not do anything less. Extra stuff are not always good. If you are to do some enhancement to the code, I really love it. But first, you have to talk to the client. You have to go to the client and say, by the way, you suggested this. I think if I add this one, it would be better. What do you think? Who's your client now? Moi. So you have to come to me and tell me, Fardad, what you have done is this. And the way you said it is that. But I think it's like this. It's better. If, if you're right, I'll give you bonus marks. I love to give bonus marks. And you'll see. I'm going to ask questions in class. You answer questions, you get bonus marks. That's what's going to happen all the time. OK, so yeah, keep that in mind. So bonus marks, you get it all the time. And let me see if the recording has stopped because the thing got cut off. It is recording. I hope it does. Yeah. Anyways, so let's put that thing out of the way now again. Everything must be in the repo. Be organized. I'm going to uh, hopefully demonstrate if, if that thing comes up. I'm going to go to my student account. And it says success. Let's see if it is actually success. or So I'll go to github.com. And maybe it's sign up. And sign in. So I think it is at my Seneca.ca. No. Mm, wait.
We just sent you an authentication to go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How do I get to my Seneca email now? Um, uh, forget about it. I'll go to my own account. Okay. Don't want it. Sorry, I have to now log into, uh, to, let me see if I can do that, actually. I'm going to log into, uh, you know what's the email URL? Uh, my Seneca. Um, Is it, um, let me see, my, I want to log into my student account and, uh, and email. Oh, okay, so. Oh, shoot, now it's going to text to my cell phone. It's as if you're in the CIA. Give me a second. <laughs> All right, let me see if the text came through. Text. Oh, there we go. So it's... Which one is the recent one? Sorry, I'm waiting for the thing to come to my cell phone. Try again. Text me. Uh huh. Yay. So the first one is done. I'm in Seneca. Now I'm going to verify my device. And we can start. All right, good. So I'm in. Trying to log in. Is, was it slow for you guys too, like this? Or you just got in? Hmm. Um, refresh. Seriously? Something went wrong? Okay, let me do it again. I should have paused. All right. So, so the very first time in an environment that you're working in, which means it's the first time you don't have the repository over there, you clone. So the very first time here, Clone. Clone the repo. Okay? Clone the repo. Okay? 
Then after that, every other time. So every other time, you pull. So the very first thing you do before you start, you pull. That's what you do. What does that do? It guarantees that the repository you are working on is synced with the mother repository. Where is the mother repository? GitHub. We call that upstream in uh, computer world. Upstream, okay? Which means upstream is where uh, all the water of the river is coming to and fish is going back to, you know? That's the thing. So upstream, okay? So we want our repository to be in sync with the other repository before we begin. So we pull. If there is any update, anything you haven't synced, it's going to sync your repository with that. Then you start your work. Then start your work. Okay? When you leave, which means you're done, or you're going to a bathroom break, or you're going to go get coffee, or you want to interrupt so you answer your sister, whatever. Whenever you leave your work, immediately you do this. Git, so when you leave, you do these. Git add, so you do, let's put it like this. Add, commit, push, okay? Now, why? Because it's a ritual, because we don't know Git yet. I just want to start you up with Git. When you are done with all these things, after uh, six months, when you actually get involved with little things and you actually, because you gotta get interested, what else I can do with this? And I have no idea what you can do with Git. It's beyond your imagination. I'm telling you, like, I, don't, I haven't seen anyone who knows Git completely, anyone, even those who worked with it with 15, for 15 years. There is also always new things coming up, and you go, wow, if you can do that too. Anyways, so why? Because I want you to be in the safest way not to get a conflict, okay? So that's what you're going to do. It's not a blind download. It updates your code. So if you do two updates that conflict each other, then it's going to issue an offer and say, I cannot pull the information in, so there is a conflict. You have to fix that conflict before doing any. I don't want you to go there, okay? That's too rich for our blood at the moment. So that's why if you do this process, that's not going to happen. So you add, which means any work that you have done, you tell to Git, please watch over this. Then you commit. It means I want to remember where this point was so I can come back to. Then you push which is a smart upload. It uploads the mother repository. It updates the mother, mother repository for future use. So push, that is a smart upload. When I say smart upload, it means it only uploads the differences, not everything. Last semester, for every single workshop, you downloaded the whole zip and you unzipped and you looked, and you deleted when something new came, and you did it again, and again, and again. You're not doing that anymore. You only have one repository of OOP workshops that I have, and it's public. You can clone. You can clone that one, too. And every time a new workshop is issued, you will automatically be notified by GitHub, telling you, hey, something has changed. And it tells you what. Then you go over there. All you need to do a, uh, a pull. It only brings the new stuff. Or all the workshops we are creating is on the fly. So we may make, make mistakes like anyone. So we are doing some fixes to the code. We are doing some fixes to the, to, to, to the description of the workshop. All those changes will be applied to yours. Okay? So remember that. You pull. Okay? That only brings in the differences. You don't have anything additional. Okay, so, and that's the process of your work. Go back to one. Two. Not one, actually. Because that one is the very first one. I'm going to make it zero. Let's put that one zero. 
Make that one. Can I do zero? Will it accept it? Yeah, perfect. Go back to one. It's like our workshop zero. It doesn't count. It's the beginning of everything. I'm going to give you that so next week you, when you get your workshop, you can actually work on it professionally. And when you have problem, I can help you professionally. Okay, I can help you. And I'll tell you what the process of help is so you know how you're going to get help from me. Okay, so what you're going to do with your help. And I, I put that one on the... On the mm, faculty information I think like and my office how to get help and I say when you are getting help you need to provide me with three information number one you have to give me the path of your repository you can just give me the HTML file that'll do too your HTML uh, URL of the thing or you can give me the uh, the SSH path for it doesn't make any difference you give me the path of your repository then you tell me what is wrong with it then you tell me, what did you do and it didn't work? Try to fix it and it didn't work. Okay? So whatever it is, the reason you, put, you give these three information to me and we start. We are on Microsoft Teams. You're at the other end. I'm at this end. I pull your repository because I'm a collaborator. I have access to it. I pull your repository. I have your work in front of me. I share my screen with you, not your screen with me. And if needed, I give you control so you can demonstrate anything to me or tell me what is wrong. And then I'll fix your code. And I'll tell you this is the re how it's fixed. When it's finished, I add, commit, and push, which means all the changes will go back to your repository. All you do at your computer is a pull. You get all the differences back. And what you do, and I'll show it to you, is a diff. Using a diff, you, let, you see at left what was there, and at right, what is it now? You reflect me, reflect in your reflect, reflection, you reflect what was wrong, uh, well, how did I help you, and you're good to go, okay? And, yeah, so, Firefox is up again. Let's see if I can actually do something with it. Where did it go? So I want to attach it here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, GitHub. All right, that's much better. So this is me. Okay, so, uh, oh, so I have OP244 works over here. So I've done that. That's, that's my repository, and that's exactly what I asked you to do. Okay, as you see over here, I created a directory for myself called Sandbox. You know what sandboxes are in kindergarten? What is it for? That's where you play. So all the dirty stuff you want to do, you want to try something, you do it in a sandbox. So that sandbox is where you create all your dirty stuff. Okay, whatever you want to do. You play in sandbox. Do all the tests creating projects, testing different codes, things that are not related to anything. Then, so what I do over here, first I'm going to clone it on my computer. So because I have an SSH key, I simply click over here on copied. Then I'm going to come to my uh, Spiegel dinghy. Where is it? Uh, in here, I'm going to go to documents. Uh, washroom? What the devil is that? <laughs> I have, a, I have a directly called washroom in there. I cannot believe it. Anyway, so uh, let me just create a direct. So I'm going to go to 244200. Probably that's a good place to be. And in here, I'm going to create uh, an Epsole Ma. That is my student thingy. Please don't send email to that. That goes to my student account. I don't even. I have that one because I was a student here a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Anyway, so I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to go git clone. And I hope that I have that uh, potty key in here. If I have it, it connects. Otherwise, I have to create one, which is a good demonstration. It's possible that it's not going to work. We'll see. 
Oh, it worked. Okay. So I have the key on this computer. All right. So that's the OP244 works. And I have a sandbox. And in the sandbox, I have over a, a directory that I did something in here. Okay. Um, I don't know what is. So if I want to delete that one, I cannot go over here and do delete. Because if I delete, Git is watching this. If you delete it, Git thinks you deleted it by mistake. It brings it back. Okay. If you want to delete it, you have to tell to Git to delete not the operating system. So you right click, you go tortoise git, and you go delete. You can keep it as local or delete. I don't want it, I'm just gonna delete. And I'm gonna say remove, and that one is removed. I'll go back over here. And as you see, the whole directory is gone, which brings me to the next thing. Empty directories in git don't make sense. A directory only exists if you put something in it. If you don't put something in it, Git just removes it. And you cannot even commit it. So now if I want to create the sandbox, because I only had one thing, I'm going to create the sandbox. Usually I do this if I have an empty directory. So what I do, I create like this. I'm going to create sandbox. OK? As you see, it puts it red. It means it was there, but it's changed. Now in here, I'm going to add a readme file to it. So in here, I'm going to create. Uh, a new file, uh, text document, and in here I'm going to say readme md, and in this md file of mine, I'll go something like, uh, I'm going to call it, I'm going to write over here sandbox, sandbox. In here, I'm going to say where I do my experiments. Okay, and I save it. Okay, now that I save this one, what I need to do is to add it. So I'll go right click over here, I'll go tortoise git, and I'll go add. If you are too lazy and you have tortoise git, you can just directly go to commit. But in here, then you can add. You see, it says all. When I click all, it actually adds everything that is new too. So if you look at it, now the sandbox readme is actually added, if you don't want to. And then in here, I'm going to say remove, uh, updated sandbox. Sandbox. Now, for commit with, uh, with, with up, Updated sandbox. For committing with uh, Tortoise Git, you, if you're lazy, you can commit and push quickly. How? Instead of commit, you just select commit and push. Okay? And the next time it shows commit and push. So it does it in two steps, in one step instead of two. And that's it. So with the commit button, you can add, push, commit, and everything. And now everything is gone. Sandbox is updated. If I go to my repository and refresh, you will see that the sandbox is now different. And if you see it say, says updated sandbox, that's where you click and it shows you the diff. So if I click over here, it actually shows the difference between the two. Always go with split, that's easier. Split actually, uh, I don't have anything, a uh, single file to show you because I deleted a whole bunch of things and created a new one. So it shows exactly what happens. You see it says minus, 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 and plus. It means all these files were deleted and this was added. So it tells you exactly what happened. And if I come right down here, this is the diff for it. There was nothing and there is something now. Okay? Now I can actually go even in my web page and I can update my readme file right over here. Oh, so let's go back. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm going to go back to my uh, repository. And I'm going to go to my readme file in here, and I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to say experiments and cool stuff. Stuff. This is all temp. OK? So I'll commit this. Uh, in here, I'm going to do, say, updated readme. And I'm going to commit the change. OK? Now I'm back in my repository. I want to start the work. What do I do? Go through the ritual. 
first, it's not the first time I have the repo. So what I will do, first I will pull. So I right click, you can do right, pull on the whole thing. You can just go on uh, the repository by itself. You can go on the repository by itself and just pull over there. And click on OK, and it pulls. There you go. You can actually diff it over here too. Doesn't make any difference. But how to diff using Tortoise Git? You right click, you go Tortoise Git, show log. It shows all the changes that happened right from the beginning. You see that? Updating Git ignore, asking for help. These are done last semester. Look at that. It's 22. I was demonstrating over there. Now here, updated sandbox. And in here, updated readme. If I click over here, it shows what was modified. Double click on that, and the diff comes up. Left is what it was, right is what it is, exactly like a browser. It shows this is what it was. Those three dots were changed, as you see, and, and cool stuff is added, and, and dot is moved to the right, and this is all temp is added underneath. So you can see exactly what was changed in your code. You come to school, you clone. You clone, you don't need to pull because it's brand new. You clone, you do your work, you push. You commit, add, commit, push. You delete everything, you go home. At home, you pull, all the changes come to your computer. You want to submit your work through Submitter. You do your work on your computer. You add, commit, push. You go on Matrix, you pull. Now you have it over there, submit. Everything's there, yes. You can break my heart and upload it using a FTP, no problem. It's like, should I do it professionally or kindergarten version? Whichever you like. Whatever rocks your boat, my friend. Okay, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm, again, workshop zero. I am telling you all these things, hoping you take it seriously. You can just ignore it and go back to IPC 144. Do your FTP thing. You put your head in that snow and think that nothing happens out there and start using SFTP and FTP again. No problem. Seriously, I have no problem with that. Okay? But when you're asking for my help, I want a repository. I'm not going to sit over there and try to instruct you. Okay, now backspace twice. No, no, don't do that. No, I don't want to do that. I want to efficiently help you. I have 80 students only in OP244 and 40 students in IPC144. I don't have time to slowly take your hand. I want to be efficiently, quickly help you and get results. That's why I'm doing this. Yes. Oh, we'll go that. Baby steps. Okay. And you did not watch the videos. It's all there. Anyways, so. How do we do, how do we work on Windows? So, on Windows, this is what we're gonna do. So now I have that works thingy over there, right? So I'm gonna go to here. The command is exactly what I have written in here, okay? The command is exactly what I have written over there. So that's that. Now I am in my F Solima thingy, and I, because, Remember, like if you have watched the video and we're going to go through it after all these demonstrations, I'm going to come to you and try to help everyone to set up their stuff. And those people who did it successfully, they're going to act like me. You're going to stand up and go help others, okay? That's how we work in here. Everybody helps everybody. I don't want you to say, I'm finished. Can I go? No, you can't go. Help others, okay? That's what you do. Now, and I'll bribe you with bonus marks with that. Don't worry, okay? So, yeah. Uh, Passphrase is something that you add to your SSH key on Matrix. First of all, what is a key? Does anybody have a key to their house or something that give me, can, can give me the key? Oh, there we go. It's this. Okay. This is a primary key. This, sorry, this primary key is database. Forget what I said. This is a private key. Okay, when you generate the key, it creates two pieces for you, private, public. This is a private key. The slot at the door where you put this one in, that's the public key. It is installed on your door when you want to go in. 
You get your private key, you put it into the public key and you turn. If it matches, the door opens, you go into GitHub. Got it? So that's what you're doing. When you generate your key, you see it says, this is public key, this is private key. Yes, so you create two pieces. Why public is public? Because you don't want to put your key and give it to everyone so everybody can get into GitHub. You will have your primary key in the computer that needs to get authenticated for GitHub. So you create one for your own computer. You can copy that one to Matrix and get into Matrix too, but don't. For Matrix, create a separate key. So if you want, you can simply go to GitHub and delete Matrix key so Matrix cannot be connected anymore because your account in Seneca was hacked. Got it? Primary key is the key. Public key is the slot that matches. You put it up. Do we understand what public and private key is? Pub private and public key is? No, 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 no. No. If you could. What is, a, what is a scenario for what you're saying? Is to you create one key and you put that one on GitHub and you use my friend's FTP situation and FTP your key on Matrix and five different computers. Because these keys are copied everywhere, all those computers can access that using that public key because they all match, they're all identical. It's as if you go to Home Depot and you make copies of your key and give it to all your friends. But the problem is that when something gets stolen in your house, you don't know who stole it. And if you are suspected that somebody did, you cannot just get that person's key because 50 copies made, could be made out of it. What is the sensible thing to do? Is to have multiple slots on your door and each one only works with one key. And you put those, give those keys to different people. So if you want to block one person, you simply take that lock out. Because of that, it's better to create one pair for each device. And that's why you have multiple keys on, on GitHub. And you name it properly. You name one my laptop. You name the other one Matrix. You name the other one, I don't know, uh, my girlfriend's laptop. And you do it like that. So, or my boyfriend's, I don't know. I see ladies are laughing. So uh, I'll try to go both ways. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you have, you have, <laughs> come on, yes, it's like, it's like you have five doors in your house and each one has a separate key. Thank you. But your analogy is wrong because it's, the, oh yeah, five doors to, yeah, five doors to your house. So house is a GitHub, doors and the slots are the public keys. There you go. <laughs> All right, thank you. I know, you can block the door completely, but, but that's not the case. Um, it's just the slots that is important. Yes? Right. Don't have to. Do it and name it so you know which one belongs to what. So if you give that laptop away or for any reason something happens, you know which key to delete so the access is gone. No, no. It's the, it's the environment that you create a key for. It's the hardware that you create the key for. It depends. If your different softwares, see, usually, oh, that's why I say put it in .ssh inside your user's directory. That, when I mention it that way, that's the standard. If any application works in standard, that's where we're going to look at the, the key. If you don't put it over there, then you have to have different keys for different applications and tell to each application where the key is. Okay, so it's possible. It's, po it's very possible that some application says, I have my own key. You have to generate key specifically for me. Then if the case, you put it like that, then you label it, this is for that application. So you know which one is for. Be organized in any case. Now, when you are creating the private key, because private key is something that if anybody has it, they have access to your life, you can actually put a password for the private key. That is called the passphrase that you see it is asking for it right now. 
Because Matrix is a public computer at Seneca and all administrators have access to it, I don't want an administrator to go to my account and poof, connect to my GitHub through that. That's why I put a very simple passphrase for it. So, and because I logged into account myself now, it actually runs it and says, enter the passphrase. So I actually entered the passphrase at the beginning just to uh, get over with that uh, thingy to do it every time. I want to be able to push and pull. If you don't do that every time you push and pull, it's going to ask for the passphrase, which is fine. If you're happy with it, do it. Anyways, so now I'm going to put the passphrase for it. So now, Uh, OP244, uh, so I don't have it over here, so I'm going to clone it right over here. So how do we clone matrix stuff? How do we clone? This is how we do it. So I'll go to the, I'll go to the repository. I'll go to my repository, OP244 works. I'll go to code. And I'll make sure the SSH is clicked and I copy. If you don't do SSH, it will clone. But because it's HTTPS, it's read only. That's how you should actually do the workshops and a project that I post. Because they are read only, never delete those things. We'll come, come, back, come back to that later. So, so what I'll be doing in here, I'm going uh, to copy this. Now I'm going to go back to Putty. In here, I'm going to say, in here, I'm going to say git clone and I right click and it pastes the exact same thing that I did and I hit enter Fatal could not create work tree director this code I exceeded <laughs> this is a student account by the way if you have something like this you have to delete files uh, remove op workshops dash rf remove dash rf my github oh. whoa i went too far back okay i want to see what else i can delete over here uh, uh, i can delete remove op345 i don't teach that this semester OP345. Oh, that's a big one, apparently. Okay, now let's go back to OP244. Oh, dev, dev. Remove dash RF dev. That's going to be a big one. Dun, 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 dun. That's a big one. Okay, there we go. Clear. Now I put up arrow to see the previous commands because I'm lazy to type the whole thing again. There we go. Okay, git clone, hit enter. Hopefully, now we're going to be fine. There we go. We're done. Now if I do an ls over here, the op244 works is in here. If I want to have the workshops, remember, another important thing to remember, and I have to put this thing over here so we see it. Which is, I'm going to say over here, oh, note, a repository, a repo cannot be in another repo. No nested repositories. You cannot copy OP244 workshop repository in your OP works repository. They can be neighbors side by side. One cannot be inside each other. Git gets confused. Okay? So never edit the OOP works repository as a practice. Clone it. Have it in your computer. Whatever you want to copy, go into the directory of the repository. Copy the piece you want to edit into your sandbox. Then start working over there. Never edit my OOP the, 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 my publications on GitHub for OP244 because editing those things will just cause trouble. You want to pull again, then it's going to tell you, hey, you changed stuff over here that you do not, did not commit and push. 
so you cannot pull it. And there is no way you can do that because it's my repository. It's read-only. Okay? Keep that in mind. All right? A repo cannot be in another repo. Remember that? Now I can go to OOP244 works and go to, say, sandbox. Or, oh, nano is your friend, read me. Okay, that's an easy editor. So, okay, so I'm going to change this to Fardud Soleil. And serial number is good. That's fine. OOP244 NAA, right? So I fix that one. I'm going to say uh, something else. Okay, I get out. Again, process. How do we do that? The person who asks how you do it on matrix. This is how you do. You do git, not fit, git add star, add everything. Then git commit dash m for the message. Stick the message right to it. In here, I'm going to say updated uh, readme dot md. Hit enter. That commits it. Then you say git push, and that pushes it up to git. So now it's on git. If I take a look at it here, you will see that it is updated. Now I want to work on my local computer with the same repository. What do I do? You can either go to the console and do the exact same thing you did on Matrix for those people who have Mac. Okay? You can do the same thing. Go on the console and add and issue the commands. But because I have Tordeski, I'm, Tordeskit, I'm lazy. I just right click over here and go Tordeskit, pull. OK. And I get the changes. Now I can start working. And if I want to see what was changed, I'll go to log. And I see over here updated readme. And I'm going to say double click. I'm going to click, double click on this one, and it shows me what it was and what it is now. OK? That's your daily life of thing. And you don't have to push all the time. Committing is the most important thing. You're at home. You're not going anywhere. So keep adding and pushing, adding and committing. Commit, commit, commit. And on your machine, on your, uh, yeah, add, commit, add, commit. You keep doing that on your local computer. At the end, when you want to go to sleep, push. Or if you want to get help from me, push. So you update upstream. You update other repository. But if you're not sure if you're coming back or not, then make sure you push. Push is just one command. I always push because sometimes you forget and you regret it. You come to school, shoot, I forgot to push. Everything's at home. Then you have to call your wife and say, hey, please go to my computer, push the repository. And she says, you forgot again? And I say, I have to teach that to my teacher, my students, so, so on and so forth. Yes? Uh, to confirm, if we were to commit 10 times and then push at the end of the night, it would everything. be all 10 everything. Okay. Yeah. Remember, Git is a distributed application, which means every single application on an environment is identical to the other. What is on GitHub is identical as to what is on your computer. You're just synchronizing these two. So if you do 50 commits over here and you push once, all those 50 commits will be sent to the Git on GitHub. And you go on GitHub, look at the logs on GitHub, you will see all those 50 commits that you have done on your computer. Git is extremely wise. And an amazing thing that you can do if something goes wrong, you can always say, oh, yesterday before I went to launch, the code was okay. Then I did something to screw it up. Two things you can do. Either you can go to, the, to that location and say, show me the difference of code of that one and now. So it shows exactly what did you do wrong. Or you could say, I just want to start over. Revert to that position. It's just, just going to revert to two days ago at that time, and you can continue your work again. It's a beautiful thing, yes. How do you revert? Too for a blood at the moment. You will find out later. You can even, you can... Like, it's so, I'm just going to tell you what the possibilities are, but just listen to this and do not have it in your short-term memory. Forget about this. You can branch a repository, which means you can say, okay, I want to develop the uh, 
write function at the, and the read function at the same time. But I don't want them to exist simultaneously. So you branch your thing. So it becomes two copies. In one copy, you do the read. In one copy, you do the write. And you test them individually, separated from each other. When they are both complete, you merge them together. You can even do that. You can fork a repository, which essentially means you have someone's repository, and you want to have that repository and continue. You can fork a repository, and you've got to have two separate repositories. Many things happen. Like, for example, all the Linux that you see, Ubuntu, Red Hat, uh, give me the names. Mint, Fedora, Fedora and Red Hat are the same. Fedora is a dev environment for Fedora. But, but all these things are forks of the same Linux. They forked it and they created a new one. And they said, we, we don't want to go back again. Fork is when you don't want to go back. OK, you want to just branch it and some, start something new. Yes? Yeah, what I mean is that if I want to work on OP, if I want to work on, so in here, let's say I want to, I want to see what the, I want to see what the workshop is so I can work on it, right? So either you go on the web or you don't want to go on the web because you want to have the files to start your work, right? So what you do, you go on the, on the school website. So we go on the organization, the OP244 organization. I go to OP workshops. I don't have anything there yet, but let's say we had something. Then I'll click, and I'll clone, and I'll come over here, and I clone it beside that one, not inside of it. So right beside it, I'm going to say git clone. So it clones that repository right in here. You see that? Now I have OOP Workshops repository. If I want to work on something, I go copy that directory and paste that directory in my works, either sandbox or wherever I want. I go over here, I paste it. It becomes a new thing in here. Then I add it, and I start work on it. OK? So as you see, so you do not you do not do any work in here, because this is a read-only repository. I cannot send anything back. Another amazing thing that you can do is this. Because I'm a student, and I want to make sure that, I, that I'm updated on all the changes that is happening to the project and a workshop, I'll go to GitHub, OP244, say. OK, so this is the, the, the GitHub organization. I go to OP244 workshop, and I'm, you see in here, what does it say? It says watch, right? I, it means it, you are not watching it. But because I am logged in as F. Soleimani here, as you see, Fred Soleil, not far out Soleimanlu, I can say watch this. And I'm going to say all activity. So what happens, as soon as Fardad, the professor, goes over here, changes anything in here, GitHub will send F. Soleima, Fardad, the student, an email saying this was changed in the repository you're watching to your Seneca email. So before I announce a workshop is posted, you know it's posted because GitHub lets you know. It's a beautiful thing. And if I make any changes to the code, you'll be notified. And you just click on the diff, and it shows you exactly what was changed. Are we good? OK. That's it. That's all we need to know about Git. Now we're going to go fix all your accounts. OK? So if your matrix is not working, I'll help you go through it. If your computer is not set up, I'll help you set it up in this lab. And that's going to be till the end of today. Yes. Mm -hmm. I forgot to push, and let's say I go home and like, oh, like I completely forgot it did work on that code here, and I started making changes. I'm like, I don't mind. 
you are creating a conflict. So then if I try to add it and then push and then try to push on this laptop, what happens? So what happens is that when you try to push, it's going to tell you it's a conflict. And it tells you which file it is and shows you the conflict file. That's the professional part. Then it shows you all the code side by side. Then you have to say, select this one, this one, this one. You merge it manually. If the code that you are creating are clearly separated, it will merge it automatically. So if you just add the one loop up there and one loop down there, everything in a file is fixed, perfectly good, it merges it. But if it cannot and it's kind of mishmash, then it shows you, then you have to say, I want this line, this line, this line. So it gives you left and right and a bottom. You have to merge it manually. That's why I always say, always do that. And one thing I have to tell you, if you get a conflict, 90% of the time, 90% of the time, if you get a conflict and you see, for example, file.cpp has a conflict, okay? Don't try to fix it with git now. You're going to learn how to do it later. Just copy that file away from your computer, put it somewhere else, delete the repository and clone again. And then bring that file back in, see what the difference is and do it. Okay? So if you see as if there's a conflict, simply delete your directory and clone again. Just take the files that generated the, the, the conflict, put it in a temporary directory. That's the best way. That's the awful way of fixing it. But for our level of knowledge, that's the best way. Okay? Um, and as you go by, you're going to get interested. And that book that I put the link over there, Git Book Pro, it's an open source book. Read chapter one and you'll be fine with it. Chapter two, you don't need to. Chapter two is branching. Forget about that. Just read chapter one and you're good. You know all the basics of Git. Okay? All right. So let me put this over here. And I actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this one because uh, I have to go to IPC and teach the exact same thing. So mm, uh, listen to me, please. So this is, the, this is the student thingy that we have, right? So you added me as a collaborator. And I go over there and I see your readme file is not good. What is this? Oh, this is OP244. Shoot. Uh, to mine. So, so you, sh you add me as a, as a collaborator and I accept your invitation and I look at it and I see something is wrong in here. What I will do is this. I'm going to come to issues, okay? And in here, I'm going to open a new issue, and I'm going to say, your readme file, me file is yada, yada. In here, I'm going to say, fix it ASAP. And I'm going to say, submit new issue. So you're going to get an email from me saying that there is something wrong with your, rip, with your repository. You go over there, you look at the issue. After you're done, you simply say, close as completed. OK? So close as completed, close issue. And you got to say over here, I fixed it. And you do a comment. Oh, not coming. Ah! Back. Anyways, yeah, so you only say, I, you don't open anything new. I fix it and you put it over there. I get a message from you that you fixed it. Okay? And I look at your repository and so on and so forth. So do that. Okay? That's a good thing. So if I see anything is wrong with the basic setups, I'll do that. With your code, please don't do that to me. Don't open an issue on your code and, and so I can get a message because I have my Git email sent to a separate directory and I use it only for invitations. If you have a problem, go on Microsoft Teams, book an appointment, explain it to me. The reason is that I'm just being frank. I don't have time to read. I want to be as quick as possible. I want to see you, hear what's your problem, get the tone of your voice, help you immediately, close it, be done with it. 
so we can be quick. So that issue thinking, you're going to do it in a professional world. We are semi-professional now, so we don't do that. Thank you for the question. And you can always, sometimes things happen on your code and you forget. Issue is a good place to remind yourself what you need to do next. So you simply can say, this thing has a problem. The problem was at this line and this line. You create an issue. Later on, you can come back over here. As you fix it, you close it as completed. OK? I have lots of issues right now on Submitter that I haven't even uh, fixed yet. Um, but I will do it soon, hopefully. Anyways.